Hey guys, so this is an example video for computing a Riemann sum with n subintervals using sigma notation. So I am going to try to walk you through this in as much detail as possible, but I do assume that you already kind of know the, the basic idea behind this. If you have no idea why we're doing this or, or, or you want more detail, I do have a very long detailed video on this to explain everything about the formulas and everything. So um, without further ado, I would highly recommend to get the most out of this video if you're trying to figure out how this works, that you pause and try the example at spots where I kind of guide you. And you're going to need to know a few formulas. So you should already be familiar with these formulas and have them written down in front of you. That's going to be very, very helpful for this particular example. Um, so these are all some formulas that we're going to use later on. And then also this is the general Riemann sum for right endpoints. So this is how we're going to um, kind of start our problem. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the formula for the Riemann sum with n subintervals using right endpoints. And then we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity for this example here. So where we want to start is we're going to use this formula. Um, for our closed interval. So if you're trying to figure out how this works, what I would recommend is that you use this formula and you get it all set up for this example here. So maybe pause and then hit play when you're ready to see that first part. Okay, so for our sum, so I've got this going from k equals 1 to n of f of, so this will be 0 plus k times 2 minus 0 divided by n all of that times 2 minus 0, all of that divided by n. Okay, so this is where I'm starting. So the first thing that I want to do is I just want to try to clean up this, this notation as much as possible. So I've got, this goes from k equals 1 to n. So this is f of, we'll call this now 2k over n, all of this times 2 over n. So now that we're here, we want to just kind of separate what are we actually trying to do. So this 2k over n, this cannot be split out because this is what the whole sum is around. So what I can do is look at this 2 over n. I want to view this as a constant. So um, n is not what we're trying to sum up here. So I need to pull this out in front. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to have f of 2k over n. So now I can actually figure out what is this. So basically now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to plug 2k over n into the function. So I would recommend that you do that and try to see how far you can kind of get with simplifying the sum from there and then hit play when you're ready. So if I do this, so this is going to be, so I've got this k equals 1 to n. So this becomes 4 minus 2k over n squared. So that's kind of what I've got. So now I want to simplify this as much as possible. So this 2n is still just kind of hanging out in front here. And then I've got this 4 minus 4k squared over n squared. Okay, so now I can use all of those formulas that I listed at the beginning of this. So I can use this to actually simplify and kind of evaluate this sum. So kind of our first goal here is to really get rid of the sum so that we can get that formula in terms of n. So if you haven't done that, highly recommend you pause, try to get this as far as possible, hit play when you're ready. I'm going to clear some space. Okay, so I want to actually separate this sum into pieces. So what I like to do is I like to um, just kind of bracket this off so I can kind of pay attention. Like this 2 over n just needs to kind of come along for the ride for a moment. And I want to just focus on what's inside of that pink bracket. So I want to break up this sum into pieces. So the first part is I've just got this constant of 4, so I can evaluate that separately from this other part, this 4k squared over n squared. I can do this separately. Okay, so now um, this is using the constant value rule. So I'll just remind you of what that said. So here it was, constant value rule. I just used this handy little formula here. So I can rewrite this part. This is going to be n times 4. So I'll just note that here. Now, looking at this part, so remember what we're actually trying to do the sum around. The sum is all around the k. So this 4 over n squared, we really want to just view that as a constant. So I want to rewrite this now by factoring out the constant. So um, I'm using this other rule. I'll show you what that was. The constant multiple rule. I'm using this rule here so I can factor out the 4 over n squared. 
So I want to go ahead and do that too. So let me go ahead and now rewrite this one more time. So all this stuff in this pink bracket, we're getting closer to actually sorting this out. So this part became 4n. And then here I said I'm factoring out the 4 over n squared. And now, check it out, I've got something that I can actually work with. So this part here, so just to be nice and clear, what do I mean by here? This part here, I now have a sum formula for this. So I'll just remind you of what that is as well. So this is why I recommend having these formulas in front of you. This is the sum formula that I want to use. So basically now we're at a point where we're going to do like a lot of heavy lifting with the algebra. So you want to write this out using that sum formula. And then basically you want to break this down as far as you can algebraically. So you're going to have to multiply and divide and do a lot of simplifying. So it's going to take you a moment to kind of get through everything. Highly recommend you pause the video and um, try to just work that all out. Hit play when you're ready. So I'm going to go ahead and just write this part out. So this k squared, if I'm using that formula that I just showed you, this is going to be, so this is 4 over n squared, this will be times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all of this over 6. So here's what I've got to sort out, and sorry I was supposed to use pink brackets. Okay, so I still am kind of sorting out all this junk in here. So I'm going to kind of clear some space and then um, we'll sort this out. So you, and you have options by the way at this point. So here's, here's kind of where we're at. If you want to start like distributing this two over n in, that's fine. I just feel like right now I'm, I'm just going to sort out kind of the stuff inside the pink bracket a little bit farther. There's, there's more than one right way to do this. So I've still got this four over n. So let's see, what can I kind of do here? So I can cancel out this n with one of these. I can divide this, so this divide this by two and two. So now what I've got, this will be minus, um, let's see, minus, so this on top will be two times n plus one times two n plus one. And then in the bottom, this will be three n. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to um, foil this out as far as I possibly can. So again, this 2 over n is just kind of coming along for the ride. I'm still kind of working on all this junk in the pink bracket. So if I foil this out, this becomes 2n squared plus 3n plus 1. All of this is still over the 3n. And now I can go ahead and uh, back uh, multiply by that 2. So I'm almost done kind of working out this stuff in the pink bracket. So I've still got this 4n, and then this will be minus 4n squared plus 6n plus 2, all of this over 3n. Okay, so now I guess I will go ahead and I will distribute this 2 over n in. I could keep going with the inside. So like I said, it, it's just kind of whatever you feel like doing, honestly. Um, if you have some other way that you did it, that's, that's okay as long as you get to the same final answer. So let me um, just clear some space again. So now this will be 8 minus, let's see, multiplying all the tops by 2, this will be 8n squared plus 12n plus 4, and then in the bottom I get, let's see, 3n squared. So now to make my life easier, what I think I'm going to do is um, just break up all these fractions. So I get 8 minus 8 over n squared over 3n squared, 12n over 3n squared, and then 4 over 3n squared. So now I get 8 minus 8 thirds minus 4 over n minus 4 over 3n squared. Okay, so let me rewrite this 8. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm just going to do this right in the step so I can kind of compress this. Let me rewrite this 8 as just 24 over 3 since it's equivalent and that will allow me to go a little bit farther with this problem. So now, um, let's see, I'll clear some space one more time. All right, deep breath, we're almost there. So 
the entire idea here is that we are trying to just simplify this as far as we possibly can. So there's like one more obvious kind of simplification or, or thing we can, like term, I guess we can collect. So here would be my final step. So I take 24 thirds minus 8 thirds, and that gives me 16 thirds. But the rest of this I really can't do anything with. So this is exactly where we wanted to get to. And what does this actually mean? So let me just show you a, a quick kind of graph again. So here's a super rough sketch of my f of x. So remember where this usually starts. So it's something like, hey, divide this up into four subintervals and then find the area of each one of those rectangles. And then that's going to be a rough estimate. And then, you know, we talk about, oh, what would happen if you bring this out to eight subintervals? And we know that this is like a really laborious process. Well, now instead of me having to sit here and, and calculate the area of all these rectangles, I can just take that four or that eight, whatever number of subintervals I have, I just plug them in for n and boom, I get my, my sum. So I don't have to go through all this work anymore. So even though this is a ton of work to figure this out, it's probably less work than having to go through and do all of this, right? Especially like, think about if I had something like, I don't know, what if I divided these again, right? What if I had 16 subintervals? Now that's just gonna take forever. So the idea behind this is that first of all, th this makes like a really nice formula that cuts out a lot of work for us. But the stronger thing is, we've talked a lot about how the best, the best estimates of area are ones that would have the most amount of rectangles. So I would just kind of keep subdividing all of these rectangles up as finely as I can. I would just kind of keep going. So maybe I have 32 or 64, or I don't know, thousands of rectangles. At some point you get so many rectangles that as you're going through this, it's kind of hard to differentiate the rectangles with the human eye. In fact, it starts to just look like with all the rectangles sitting so close to each other, it looks like we've really just kind of almost probably filled in this shape. And so the idea is if we if more rectangles results in a better area sum, then the best area sum would be one that has an infinite amount of rectangles. And so this is why taking this formula, then I really want to evaluate this as n goes to infinity, because that's kind of the ideal scenario for my little picture that I've drawn. So this is the limit that I need to evaluate. And oops, this is not three, this is n. Okay, and so now as I look across this, the limit of any constant is just the constant itself. But with n going to infinity here, this whole thing goes to zero. So this whole thing, this whole thing goes to zero. And so does this, this also goes to zero. So all I'm left with then is 16 thirds. And so then what that means is that the best kind of estimate for the area of, of this, actually no longer an estimate, the actual area of, of this shape kind of contained between zero and two and you know from here down to the, the x-axis is 16 over three. So we've done it. And so that that's it. That's, that's the last part of this. So um, I do have more videos on this if you're looking for that. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching.